Hi everyone and welcome to day three of Pwn to Own Tokyo live from Toronto. I am Dustin Childs with the Zero Day Initiative and we are at our final day of the contest. So far we've had two great days of pwnage. In total we've awarded $99,000 for 17 bugs. We've had two great days but we're shaping up to have a great final day as well. Right now Team Flashback is in the lead for Master of Pwn, but Devcor has a chance to tie them with the first attempt of our third day which has them targeting the Western Digital MyCloud Pro NAS series. And could you run the ID? Maybe the show is, is here. So we may have results yeah. pretty quickly here. Yeah. Yeah, very quickly. <laughs> that was pretty fast. <sighs> they used a six bug chain to get their root shell. However, two of these bugs had previously been reported. That makes this a partial win. They still earned $17,500 and one and a half points towards Master of Pwn. Next up, Team Bugscale targeted the LAN interface of the Netgear Nighthawk R7800 router. Yeah, sorry about that, it don't work. Unfortunately, they could not get their exploit to work within the time allotted. Uh, let's talk about it in the disclosure room, right guys? Joining me right now is Corey Ford, who is the Senior Manager of Threat Research uh, with Trend Micro. Corey, hopefully you can hear me now. Yeah, absolutely, Great. I can hear you. Good to, hopefully I don't, I have, don't have my mute button on. Explain to me what your role is in Pwn to Own. Uh, so I actually manage the team that takes the the excellent research that all of the the submitters have have done and converts that into tipping point filters. So we actually take that and put it into actionable actionable protection for the customers. So what's the process like for that? What's the process for creating a filter? All right. So it's actually within uh, Pwn to Own pretty easy. Uh, because of all the great researchers, right? They come in here with, you know, exact knowledge of how their vulnerabilities and bugs work. So all we have to do is take their great research and convert that into a into a filter or a signature. They uh, they go to the disclosure room. None of y'all are able to see that. <laughs> right. Um, and we sit there, we sit around, and we have discussions. They explain the vulnerability. We ask questions, um, and then we write up some guidance for that and send that off to our team, uh, which when we're remote is luckily us. Um, <laughs> so we get yeah. to we get to do all of the, the speaking and understanding and the writing of the rule. But normally when it's back to normal, we'll be sending it back to our teams for uh, filter writing. What are some of your favorite memories from previous contests? Pono in Tokyo is always my favorite. And that's just me being biased because Tokyo is amazing. It's probably the best city I've ever been to. Um, it's it is amazing it's clean, city, to be sure. Yeah, the food is out of this world. <laughs> it's yes. the probably the thing I hate. The thing that I hate most about being remote is missing Pwn to Own Tokyo. Pwn to Own newcomer Guarif Barua targeted the Western Digital MyCloud Pro Series PR4100. So basically, we got the root shell. So it's okay. So we do have a root shell. That's a very positive sign. It's gonna. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Good job. He was able to demonstrate getting a root shell on the device. However, the bug he used had been previously reported during the contest. He still earns one point towards Master of Pope. The Vitel cybersecurity team returned for their second attempt at the contest. This time, the Sony X800 Smart TV was their focus. That looks to be the bug extraction crew ready to come out and uh, run this attempt. Okay, the attempt has started. Our bug extraction team is there. Successful? Huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were able to read sensitive files from a fully patched device. However, the bug they use was publicly known. This partial win does result in one point towards Master of Pwn. In the final entry of the contest, the Star Labs team returned to target the Synology disk station DS418 Play NAS. And yeah. it seems to be working fine, please, from what I'm seeing. It's a successful demonstration. It's a... Oh yeah, that is. Why don't you look at that? They combined a race condition and an out-of-bounds read to get a root shell on the device. This successful demonstration earned them $20,000 and two points towards Master of Pwn. And thus ends another exciting Pwn to Own event. After tabulating all of the points, the team flashback duo of Pedro Barrow and Radek Damiansky came out on top and were crowned Master of Pwn. Congratulations to the two researchers.
So, gentlemen, congratulations on your first Master of Poem win. How are you feeling? I'm seeing double. <laughs> That's better. Now, again, congratulations on your first Master of Poem victory. How are you guys feeling? Well, amazing. I mean, uh, you know, it was exactly one year we participated in our first uh, Poem to Own, so Tokyo last year. So in the meantime, we participate in Miami and, um, you know, now this one. And, you know, our goal was always to get Master of Poem, obviously, right? But we never expected it to happen in one year. I mean, in one calendar year. So, I mean, we're, it's fantastic, really. I mean. So last year, Pondo in Tokyo, was, that was your first Pondo? Yeah, so last year we started with Ponto on Tokyo, where it was on-site competition. Uh, it was um, our first one, so it was very cool to see how everything works. And after that, uh, you guys announced uh, Miami and we said, yeah, it's a bit different. Uh, let's give it a try. It's um, completely different targets. And there, uh, you know, we are leading for uh, two full days. Uh, and then we've learned that there are so many unexpected uh, results and course of actions uh, in a day that um, it's really so unpredictable how the day will go. Two of our bugs were knocked out before the competition. We had one more also mm -hmm. on top of that, which we couldn't use in the competition. But yeah, uh, lucky for us, we, we made it to the top at the end of the day. Yeah, I was going to ask the kind of emotions that you guys went through when those last minute patches came out. I mean, and uh, some of the some of the attempts uh, maybe had got had had uh, been patched out. So I was wondering what what you were thinking, the processes that you went through there to uh, to adjust what you had uh, submitted to the contest. I mean, you can imagine the initial shock, rage, uh, <laughs> sadness, everything. Right. <laughs> uh, but once we got over it, um, you know, we tried to look for alternative bugs, but the, the problem is that this was like five, five days, the first one, and then the other one dropped one day before the competition. Uh, and the thing is, we actually, we spent a lot of time in this, you know, we spent, I don't know, rather what, three months. So by the time that these patches rolled out, we were so exhausted that it was very hard for us to, to keep looking. But we did try. I mean, we didn't give up, of course. Are you going to retire now and go out on top, or are you going to defend the title? We're going to go out guns blazing, Dustin. We're going to keep <laughs> keep uh, keep poning, you know? So uh, go ahead. this is our goal. Like I, like I said, from the beginning, it was our goal. Well, guys, congratulations again. Um, I don't know who of the two of you will get this spectacular trophy. I know uh, I'm jealous yeah. of whoever gets to keep it. <laughs> uh, but uh, definitely let me know the address and we'll get that shipped out shortly and make sure that you get uh, some fresh t-shirts too that say Pondo in Tokyo live from Toronto to commemorate your uh, your win as Master of Poem. And that wraps up another fantastic Pondo in Tokyo. For the entire competition, we awarded $136,500 for 23 unique bugs across six different devices. So Brian and Duel, how are you guys? How are you feeling at the end of the contest? Um, I'm exhausted, to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> I'm the same way. <laughs> and I didn't do anything. Well, I just sat here. Yeah, Abdul, why don't you go ahead from your perspective, especially there with hands on the keyboard? How, how do you think everything went? I mean, it went. Uh, to be honest, it went great. Um, it was super smooth from our side. Although we've had uh, a couple of challenges when it comes to a couple of things. Um, Things have, have been a little bit different this year since uh, basically this is the first time we run Ponto on from an actual Trend Micro office. Um, that made uh, some things, yeah, th that made some things easier for us, like, you know, shipping the gear, setting up internet connection, um, everything. We have that under control. So that's that, that made things way easier for us from that perspective. Um, but we definitely had some challenges uh, because, you know, at Ponto on, we don't have to deal with video, we don't have to deal with. Uh, the researchers set up when it comes to basically having their, they basically come in, put their laptops, run their exploits, and it's all done. But in, in this case, we had to basically um, kind of go over the dependencies. And some of these exploits did have some crazy dependencies, not that crazy, but some of them did have um, some dependencies that we, we had to deal with, um, you know, last minute and stuff like that. But in general, I think it was a great event. It was super smooth. Yeah, it's been it's been a learning experience for us, and we hope that people, you know, on the stream really enjoyed it. I thought the team here at Trend did an excellent job putting this together. It's uh, 
uh, you know, it's been a, a very fun event. And, uh, you know, for me, you know, even though I'm virtual and I'm sitting here in Austin uh, and you're in Tennessee, we've got our production team in Ireland. We're streaming things to Vancouver. We got, you know, our, 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 our team in Toronto dealing with all the stuff. I mean, it's, it's quite a cosmic event. And I'm, I'm just as tired as I, as I am uh, doing a physical event uh, in, in, in Tokyo. So it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly glad uh, that it's over, but I'm also glad that it was a, a huge success. I mean, we've had, we saw basically every flavor of attempt. We had a lot of, diff you know, I think it's our biggest pwn to own Tokyo ever from a participation perspective. So um, yes. not only did we, uh, you know, uh, I think exceed the, uh, uh, the expectations for the conference this year, but I think it's also, you know, uh, put us to, you know, really think about how we're going to approach Pwn to Own in the future. We know that the streaming thing can be successful and we want to look at how we can make it more interactive for people. And we'll be looking for feedback uh, on that from the, from the community. We'd love to get your feedback. Tweet me either at Dustin underscore Childs or tweet at the ZDI. And give us your feedback and uh, let us know, did you enjoy it? Are you going to go back and watch it later or, you know, hit some of the highlights off YouTube or whatever? Whatever feedback you can provide us, that'll be great because we'd like to take that forward to the next competition. If the next competition is virtual, if it's physical, probably a combination of the two, quite frankly, uh, moving forward. And that's kind of the way we've like started almost envisioning things. Like, wouldn't it be great if we could stream this live from Vancouver as we're doing all this stuff too, and uh, you know, have everyone watch that. So that'd be great. So I just wanted to say thanks to to all the, the the sponsors, you know, Facebook this year came out and sponsored the conference, you know, brought Oculus and, and Portal to the target list. You know, uh, we're looking to, you know, hopefully have people show up and, and target those those solutions in the future. You know, sometimes it takes a couple of years for, uh, for for researchers to start and understand the attack surfaces on those devices. And, uh, you know, and, and for the vendors that showed up to participate in the disclosure room, you know, Western Digital, Synology, you know, I think the conversations between the researchers and, uh, and the CDI can, uh, the guys were in the show there, Abdul in uh, in Toronto. I think the conversations were really good. Um, I think we've got a lot of great bugs that have ended up in their hands now to fix. Um, and so, you know, I'd like to thank them as well for participating at the event. I want to say special thanks to everyone involved, especially our participating researchers and vendors who make this contest possible. Our next event will be Pondo in Vancouver in March of 2021. We hope to see you there.